UFC 74 and number one, folks, and the Bulls managed to do what on paper was seemingly a pretty impossible job, and they've won away in Dublin. 27 points to 26. It actually looks closer than it was in the end with a late length to try bringing it back to a point, but that was a consolation try. Um, crazy, crazy stuff. I've just got up this morning and watched it a wee bit delayed. But uh, yeah, man, the competition just got a bit more spicy because Leinster, who were, what is it, like four titles in a row for the old Pro 14? They're not going to get it this year because they've been beaten at home by the Bulls. So um, yeah, man, we'll go through some stats and key events, but I'm still kind of in shock, so forgive me if this is all a bit of a ramble, but yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, there was maybe a sign that it was going to go well for the Bulls early because they did manage to hold, like, within the first, like, two minutes. Leinster had, like, 12 or 13 phases. It's just that kind of game where you know Leinster are going to score, but they don't. The Bulls managed to hold them out. So, encouraging signs for the Bulls early. Like, you don't want to be in a semi-final and concede points within the first minute. That would have been a bad look. But the Bulls' defense hold, encouraging. The Bulls' first line-out does go poorly. And their first scrum gets pinged. So they're still not, not that great a start. But they haven't conceded any points, the Bulls, early. And to be fair, it's not their line out that has all the troubles in this game. It's Leinster. Goodness gracious me. Well, I think they lose three. And they're all pretty key ones. At least two of them are five meters out. Maybe three. The Bulls' line out defense was incredible. Um, first try of the game does go to Leinster, though. Sheehan. Uh, as the one who's kind of able to gather a bobbling ball, Ross Byrne, with a nice little dink through. And it's just one of those ones where the rugby ball can be cruel. It ends up nutmegging Dan Creel. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those ones, eh? Sometimes it makes you look silly. But uh, Dan Sheehan showed some pretty good skills. He goes through seven points to nil. Um, Bulls hit back with a penalty, so seven points to three. Commentary team says something like, the Bulls aren't too one-dimensional with just kicking the ball. And I was like... No, no kidding, Sherlock. Like, they have the most offloads in the competition. What else do you want? Like, yeah, they've got game breakers all around the park. So, yeah, congratulations for that. Uh, magnificent bit of insight. But anyway, uh, forgive me for being a little bit cynical about how much <laughs> rugby some of these guys actually watch. Anyway, um, there was a Bulls chance for a, a pretty bloody easy try for uh, for Moody. Maul, couple of phases. It seems like Moody has scored a remarkably easy try in the scheme of things. Like, they kind of managed to uh, to cut the Lance the boys open, but he drops the bloody thing over the line, a la Rico Ioane a couple of years ago, where he's just too casual and putting the ball down. There's a bit of separation. I thought there was maybe a fingertip on it from one angle, but the TMO and the ref are pretty happy there was separation. Either way, man, you shouldn't be not scoring that kind of try. Like, you or I could have scored that one. It's essentially catch the ball and put it on the ground. But he doesn't do it. Fortunately for him, though, his forwards are able to bail him out because it's back for an advantage. Five-meter tap, kind of switch play, which is smart. They don't just run straight into the length of the wall and uh, over for a try for the ball. So, yeah, they kind of saved their fullbacks' blushes by uh, still getting the try, which they had well worked previously. So 10 points to 7. The Bulls are in front, and what happens not that often is a quick-fire double. Korbala's one's on 20 minutes, and then Kutsia's one's on 25. That doesn't happen that often. Lens they don't concede, especially at home. Two tries in five minutes. Um, that one was a, a line-out move, which um, they, again, just didn't set the straight maul. Uh, they went through a couple of phases after getting it kind of slightly more into the midfield. And then, um, yeah, Kutsia was able to go over like two phases. TMO did have a quick look for um, a potential knock-on in the build-up, but nothing doing. So 17-7, Bulls have got a 10-point lead. From there, it gets a little bit messy. Both sides kind of knocked the ball in a little bit. A few mistakes, but um, uh, the Leinster guys did come back kind of as expected. Jordan Lama in the build-up, as expected, because he's been in crack and fall. Good line break. And then Henshaw is kind of able to pick and go close range, uh, gets the ball down. So it brings it back to 17 points to 14. That's the score at halftime. And the rain is starting to come down at that time as well. So it's kind of no wonder that things are getting maybe a touch messy. I've just had a cloud come over here, so maybe it's about to start raining again here. Um, second half, Henshaw, I think it's him that knocks it on from the kickoff, and it's kind of a reverse of the first half, right? The Bulls, phase, 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 like 16 phases, but this time it's Lentz's turn to win, time to win a turnover. 
And to be fair to the Irish commentary team, they were given the ref a bit of stick about that turnover. They thought Doris was well off his feet. Uh, he didn't look to be supporting his body weight. But um, as long as the calls go both ways, I don't usually mind too much. But anyway, they get out of dodge. Um, then the Bulls get a scrum penalty. There's a bit of handbags. And there should be a bit of handbags in a game like this, right? It's a semi-final. These guys should be fired up. They should be getting under each other's skins. The Bulls guys should be trying to rile up the Leinster guys who are not used to losing at home. And the Leinster guys should not be wanting to take that. And they should be trying to push back. So, yeah, I don't mind a little bit of that. Um, but then for Leinster, it goes it goes a little bit worse because they, they concede a penalty try on 53 minutes. And it's one of those ones where maybe you just let them all go over and make them kick the conversion in the wind. Because it's a penalty try. It's a maul and Ryan kind of chops it down from the side and he gets yellow carded. Can't be doing that. Uh, penalty try, so the free two points on top of it and given that score line, maybe kind of crucial. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not ideal stuff, is it? And um, for, for the Bulls, it's bloody good. 24 points to 14. The maul was trucking along. I don't think much was going to stop it. So um, yeah, 24, 14. There's half an hour to go and uh, they're 10 points in front. Not a position I think many people thought that game was going to be in. At that time, when Leinster, they're a man down. They're still under a bit of pressure. Um, they get charged down while exiting, but they do manage to kind of handle it pretty well, the Exeter boys, the Exeter boys Leinster boys. And, um, yeah, they, they managed to find themselves down the Bulls territory. From pretty much then on, eh, the crowd get really into it. Despite the fact they've got a yellow card, they are essentially camped in the Bulls territory. And here's where the Leinster line-out failing again and again and i swear again just absolutely cost them maybe the game like you got to give credits to the bulls for for contesting the lineouts five meters out from their own line because you know that maul is coming but i mean yeah it's just madness the bulls were able to get these lineout steals i think it's three times pretty much in quick succession like unbelievable the crowd's trying to get behind the team they're getting themselves the field position but then they just can't do it. They've got the balls under the pump, but then like um, one of the clearing kicks, O'Loughlin just kind of drops it on, drops the ball. He's got nobody around him, uncontested. Just knocks it on. That's a little bit of pressure off. The balls are able to kind of box kick it back. Um, there's one moment where, was it Lama? Kind of takes Papier into touch. Or it's a seatbelt tackle. And the touch judge is like, that's fine. And then, um, was it Marcel Kutzia getting in the ref's ear about the laws? After Sexton had done the same thing earlier and the ref's like telling both of them, bro, uh, there's no captain's challenges, so leave me and my TMO to sort it out. They did go back and check that one. The TMO did get a have, have a word in the ref's ear to say, um, no, no, that one, that one is a high tackle. So again, it's a chance for the Bulls to kind of get out of dodge when they have been camped down their own end for ages. Um, the Bulls finally went down Leinster's end, but then had a muck up of their own when like Tumbwe runs into Bota. So it's just like, man, would would somebody please stop making mistakes? It does happen when uh, Leinster score their try through O'Loughlin. They finally win a bloody line out. And uh, that's when they look slick, like you're more used to seeing. Um, they win the line out. Lama again with the kind of half break. Um, uh, Henshaw kind of puts him through that gap and they get the ball wide, good hands. And uh, it's a crucial conversion, but with that win, Sexton can't do it. So it's a 24 points to 19 scoreline. And um, with Mornay Stain coming on, you know he's going to have a shot at goal. It does happen when, uh, when Leinster get pinged at the breakdown. That makes it 27 points to 19. So that's an eight-point lead, man. Eight-point lead with like five minutes to go. Seems like a pretty long way back. Healy does get a consolation try on 82 minutes right under the sticks, but it is too little too late. So, um, yeah, man, crazy, crazy stuff. I almost feel exhausted after watching that game. It was, yeah, it was just crazy. Um, both sides had kind of head in their hands moments. Like I said, the Bulls not able to get that moody try. Tumble running into Porta, but the, the Leinster lineup, as I said, you'd be you'd be so frustrated if you're a Leinster fan. Um, stats wise, possession 49-51 so pretty tight, but territory was 70-30 to Leinster. They they didn't capitalize on the territorial advantage. Second half, territory was 78-22. They were camped down the Bulls half for ages. Um, clean breaks is four to one to Leinster, but the key areas, I think, man, turnovers conceded 18 to 10. So Leinster too guilty of um, coughing up the pill. 
Um, the ball set eight balls to three, so they were using that to good effect. Line out 11 from 14 length. Like I mentioned, that's three in key field position. You can't be doing that. And uh, the Bulls just missed that one early. Otherwise, they were spot on. Uh, the Bulls midfield was pretty quiet. But, I mean, Elric Lowe, 68 run meters, five defenders beaten. He's a unit. Marcel Kutzee ends up with a try. He makes 26 tackles out of 28. So, a pretty solid shift from the captain. Lama beats six defenders, which is kind of par for the course. He's been in good form. Um, Van der Fleer makes 24 out of 24 tackles, which is a good shift as well. Doris concedes four penalties, which is too many. But, um, yeah, this new competition will have a new champion, if you can call it new, because uh, Leinster's run of titles is done. Four on the drop, and then no more. So, yeah, they'll finish without a trophy this season, which is unusual. But um, for the competition, it's maybe not a bad thing. We could have an all South African final if the Stormers beat Ulster, or it could be another uh, Irish and South African clash if Ulster can get the job done away. We will wait and see. But anyway, folks, you guys let me know your thoughts. It was a crazy game. I'm glad I watched it minute by minute. And um, yeah, it was it was uh, certainly something else. It's a big turnaround from when these guys played at the first round of this competition, eh? when uh, Leinster won that one pretty easily. So yep, pleasing stuff. You guys let me know your thoughts. Good game. That's what a semi-final should be. A nice tight game. But um, yeah, you guys have any thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Yeah.